I take my vitamins. Hey haunties, welcome back to another episode of the Haunty Hour, another edition. The show where I talk about whatever I want. Because it's my show, not yours. I didn't really have a lot of stuff on my mind this week as to what I should talk about, but I did want to hit on something really fast about uh, what I've been getting a lot in my recommended feed recently is, um, like, can you be goth without liking or listening to goth music? And generally, the consensus is that you can't unless you like goth music. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna say that, you know, that makes 100% sense. A lot of people are saying it a lot better than I will, but basically, goth music makes up, like, half of all of goth. Does that make sense to you? You're not like limited to just like goth bands from the 80s, you know what I mean? Like there's synth pop, <sighs> new wave, dark wave, etc, etc. I'm not gonna sit here and list everything for you because there's a lot. There's more important things to be talking about within the gothic subculture than just oh, am I not goth because I don't like goth music? It, there's there's so many things. One of the biggest things that comes to my mind is like racism within the goth subculture is pretty predominant. And there are some black goth YouTubers that I've seen uh, talk about it. And I'm not gonna overstep my boundaries um, because I'm not black and the people talking about it are facing things that I don't have to face because I'm light skinned white passing Mexican and that this hasn't I haven't faced those issues within the subculture you know what I mean but that's something that that's like a bigger issue racism within the subculture needs to be discussed a lot more than it is um and it needs to be called out and stopped because if if it's if you want to be an all-inclusive welcoming subculture you have to not be racist. Not everyone in the subculture is like consciously being racist, um, but it is something that needs to be discussed and talked um, talked about more often. And we need to um, like make those voices heard. So down below, I'm gonna list some videos on racism within the goth community because I don't want to overstep on something that I haven't personally experienced myself. And it's just one of those things that's that's more important. So yeah, there's, there's more important things within the subculture to be discussing. I've never even met a goth person who, or a person who calls themselves goth that doesn't listen to goth music. So, I mean, if you want to like talk about issues and get in fights online and stuff, trying to dismantle like racism within the goth subculture is like, a better way to spend your time. I don't know, there's so many things that people are always fighting about and it's literally, it's just a fucking tree. Okay, the tree is goth. Then there's all the other little branches, but there's there's the branches that are like trad goth, new goth, etc. But like, you're all part of the fucking tree. So just grow up and just stop being assholes. Like, it's not that hard. But that's really all I want to say on that because I'm not the one who's experienced racism within the subculture. I've definitely experienced like discrimination and prejudice and stuff based off of uh, being Mexican and being queer and all and, and a bunch of other stuff that doesn't really matter right now. But um, not within the goth subculture. But there are a lot of people that have and you should be listening to them and taking what they have to say into account and, you know, getting your friends and telling them to shut up and making them learn. There's, there's more important things to deal with is, is what I'm getting to here. So an eclipse happened. That's exciting. I don't really have a lot to say about that. Um, I live in California and we didn't get the total eclipse. The sky kind of went overcast for a second and that was it. It wasn't exciting, but it's fine. There's another total eclipse next year. Um, and there's like one more closest here, I think. We have so many eclipses now, solar and lunar. You can feel the eclipse's power for a while after it has passed. Within like the next week or so, you're still gonna be feeling the effects of the eclipse. You may be getting a lot more headaches, you may be really exhausted, or you may be brimming with energy out of nowhere. But the eclipse is kind of like a reset button, so this is a really good time to really get your priorities in order. Joss Whedon's ex-wife wrote a letter talking about how unfeminist or fake feminist he is. Yeah, fake feminist. And I just want you to know that he's always been shit. I love Buffy. Angel was kind of all over the place, but I mean, a prime example is how he fucked over Cordelia. And his writing within the Buffy universe hasn't always been feminist. 
Um, I am kind of annoyed with people trying to throw around feminists to make it trend, especially within TV shows. There's a lot of TV shows now that are just like outwardly trying to show that they're feminists just so that they can get like gif sets and like tweets of like, wow, how progressive this show is, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's really infuriating because I feel like the people that are acting within the show and the writers are just taking like buzzwords from from white feminism and not really taking into account what they mean and making um and writing stories based off of like what really needs to be changed and helping people really understand it they just want to get that metal to show that they're progressive and it's really stupid but now that i'm done sidetracking um i don't know if you know this but joss whedon has always sucked and if you've seen his shit with marvel he made two or did he make Magneto 2? I didn't watch The Avengers because I think The Avengers suck. But uh, he made the Romani characters, he made them a part of Hydra. And Hydra has always been symbolisms for, uh, for, for Nazis. And uh, I just think it's really kind of, it's really disrespectful. It's really in bad taste. It's really bad writing. It's really ignorant to make these characters, especially one who's like huge thing about him is he is a Holocaust survivor, support Nazis. Um, like how ignorant are you? Especially because like neo-Nazis now are even wearing high dress shirts and like you're stupid. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna give you guys some required reading if you read comics. These are comics that I've reread over the years that I'm just still obsessed with that I enjoy my first one. This is like the must if you haven't read it yet. It's uh, the Runaway series. Ooh, look at them. Which is also funny because Joss Whedon was a part of this temporarily at one point. This is such a good series. Um, and they're actually redoing it right now and they're creating a live action series on Hulu. But they're rebooting the series. I think it's going to be a continuation and they're going to be reviving some of the members who may or may not have died. And it's really exciting because Nico's my girl. Do not read this one though. This is when Battle World happened and this is shit. This is not the same thing as The Runaways. It's not good. It sucks. The Sex Criminals is also a really good series. The story is about people who freeze time when they orgasm. I haven't read any more of this one. I picked it up randomly on Impulse, but I've been looking for it. It's called Black Magic. It's about a police officer woman who is a witch and she's been alive for a long time and something's coming after her um, within the series. So The Wicked and Divine, I have every single issue of. I've been subscribed to it for a while now. It's about 12 different people who every 90 years are reincarnated into different gods within every single like deity pantheon. They live for two years and then they die. And there's a lot of shit that goes on that I don't want to spoil for you, but basically it is amazing. The artwork is great. The story is great. It's still going on. This is something that you should really be reading. The Sandman series, it's been around for decades at this point. This is a special edition. I'm lucky enough to have it. It's about the personification of Dream and his family, death, delirium, desire, destruction, destiny, despair, all of them. And the story's really good. There's a lot of beautiful artwork. Um, it goes over 10 issues, like 10 uh, omnibus issues. And it's really good. And if you haven't read it yet, I don't know what to tell you. My song of the week is Water Me by Lizzo. And if you haven't heard it yet, then go listen to it. Um, it's fantastic. Everything Lizzo does is so good. And her voice is amazing. Her instrumentals are always good. <sighs> and it's just great. My product of the week are these sticky things that I didn't get charged for, and I love them. The card of the week is the Knight of Cups. This is the overall energy of this week, situations, people, etc. And first and foremost, what the Knight is telling us is that if we know what our passion is, if we're being drawn to something new, it's time to start figuring out how to execute it, if not already be executing it. Instead of fantasizing about it, start doing something. Um, because fantasizing and not executing and not planning and not thinking things through isn't going to get you anywhere. The night is also telling you that 
within tough situations right now, think with your heart and not fully with your head. In situations where you're arguing with people, you need to empathize. You need to think about what's going on in their situation and not just within yourself. But in terms of tough situations right now, is a good time to go with your heart and follow your gut and your intuitions and your dreams. Knights are messenger cards. This one is talking about new people, new situations, new opportunities that are coming your way that um, you need to take because through these situations, bigger and better things are going to happen. This can be anywhere from traveling to another country to just meeting someone that's gonna be like your right hand man or finally using your creativity to to make your dreams come true you know what i mean this is a this is the like, sort of first steps this is these are the building blocks he's bringing you things that are going to help you move forward so it's it's really good to pay attention to the signs and really take up the opportunities when you can really just take this time to go with your gut listen to your intuition your dreams your creativity start expressing your creativity and don't be afraid to put yourself out there as always if you want a full in-depth reading they're on my etsy in the comments below let me know how you spent your eclipse you can find me in most places at pop goth with an underscore and on tumblr at holographic goth um i will see you later in the week for another video and that's pretty much it. Bye, haunties.